Now to create a product, go back and I'll create a new product. We'll create a simple product. Um, and I'm gonna just, just because we created a new catalog, I'm gonna use it. We're gonna use the Supro catalog and we're gonna add a new product. Uh, this is gonna be Supro, Supro Premium Blinker, Blinker Fluid. Now the short description is what shows up on the product uh, card when we when we see a card view. Um, the full description is what's going to show up when you look at the product detail page. Again, if we did want to provide um, localized versions of any of this, uh, just about every single field, any field that's exposed to the front end should be localizable. Now, I'm actually going to make this for sale through the Minium storefront. So I'm going to use the Minium categorization for this. Um, and we don't really have a good category, so I will just go ahead and put it into the engine category um, for now. Now, mentioned earlier specifications. Specifications, uh, not only have they moved to a new location, but we have some new functionality with specifications. I can use... Um, existing specifications just by selecting, start typing, and it'll give me a list. I can grab one of those and use that, but I can also add a brand new specification. So maybe we wanted to have a specification for, um, I don't know, density, the density of the wiper fluid. Um, that is not an existing specification, but from right here, I can create a new specification. I don't have to leave this screen, go someplace else, and then come back. Uh, now, the way that they work is still the same. It's just basically a, a value, a, a static value that you're going to type in there. So uh, we'll say this is 16 ounces, um, and that would go under the, the dimensions. And then for the uh, density, we'll say that's low density. And uh, maybe that would go under material. I don't know. We'll just use that as an example. Uh, options, same thing is available on options. So I could use something like package quantity if I wanted to, or I could set a brand new option. Um, so let's say that we wanted to have an option for the viscosity. We can create that. It's a new option and we can add values again just like we could before, but now we're doing it from the context of the product. We don't have to get out of the product, change context, go someplace else and, and fill this in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is a SKU contributor. Uh, and I'm gonna say that we have two options. We're gonna have uh, low viscosity and we're gonna have high viscosity. So we have those two values here. Now you notice there are some other features. Um, in addition to using just a simple value, um, I could also use a product as a value. Um, so this would be, again, if we were building a bundle. Now I'm going to have another video that's going to go into that in more detail um, because that's a little bit more of an advanced feature. For now, I just want to focus on kind of the basic products. This is a simple product with simple values. Uh, SKUs is up next, and I'm going to go ahead and I've got... Uh, um, skew here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go back and set that skew contributor. Let's try that again. There we go. Generate all skew combinations. That's what was missing. Um, so we have our high vis viscosity and we have our low viscosity. So I'm going to call this Supra um, part number one, two, three, four, five. And we'll say that this is $10. And I'm going to go ahead and set the inventory as well. Again, this is something when you're doing a demo, make sure that you are setting some inventory. Um, it will be helpful later on when you try to put the product in your cart and try to check out. 
Also make sure uh, that when you're creating products, you are setting the, uh, the SKU. By default, it's gonna just be the word default and that's gonna cause problems later on with your pricing and with your inventory levels because um, you could have multiple products that have the same SKU. Okay. Oh, I forgot to set a price on there. So the low viscosity, let's call that uh, $9. Now, I will have another video where I'm going to go into more detail about these promo prices, price lists, discounts, tiered pricing, all of those options. Um, but for now, I just want to kind of focus more on just general product details. Now, under media, we have a couple of options here. We do have the option to add an image. So I'm going to select a file. And I actually have in my global site, I've created um, kind of a folder structure uh, just to show kind of what might be uh, possible. So I'm going to have my, my blinker fluid image. And again, you could have as many of these images as you want. And you could tie that image if you wanted to, to a specific option so that as you change options, you have different images. Uh, I believe there is a bug in 2.1.1 where that may not be changing right now, uh, but it should work. You should be able to have a, a separate image for each SKU. Uh, now I'm gonna go also add an attachment and I'll grab from my global site, uh, my product documentation, here's a, um, selection guide that might help you choose the right type of blinker fluid. Yeah. And again, same thing with the, the attachment. You could link that if you had different, uh, different documentation for different SKUs. Uh, product relation, let's go ahead and add a product relation here. So if somebody was trying to look for blinker fluid, uh, they might be interested in uh, maybe some brake fluid as well. Um, so I'll put brake fluid in there. Actually, let me just go ahead and search for all fluid um, and I'll grab all of the Minium products. So we now have a product relation defined. Um, I'm not gonna set up a subscription for this one. I'm not gonna worry about the visibility. I'm going to allow this product to show up in the Minium catalog and, or I'm sorry, the Minium channel and the Speedwell channel, that's fine. Um, and for configuration, one thing to keep track of when you're, when you're doing this for a demo, um, if you have other products, if you're keeping the Minium products and you're adding your own products to it, you may want to just make sure that you're matching the availability and the stock quantity. Um, that way, when people are looking at the storefront, everything looks consistent. It's definitely not required, but um, it is kind of nice. And um, the default now is to allow back orders. So that's good if you forget to add inventory um, and you still want to kind of go through that checkout process, that'll still work. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this product, and if that works, I can go back to my storefront, and if I go to my catalog, I should be able to find that new product in there. Supro Premium Blinker Fluid, there it is. I can select my viscosity level. Um, I've got my image, my my. Uh, documentation is there. Now this product publisher currently is showing anything in the same category, um, but I could also modify this if I wanted to use this product publisher um, to try and help cross sell. Um, and we're gonna have another video where we'll talk a little bit more about how you can use Life Commerce to increase revenue. Um, but if we come back to this page now, I should be seeing the, um, anything that I tagged as cross sell should be showing up in here. Looking for more information on this topic or others? Check out our links in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.